a quick walkthrough on how to add full damage to your 2D platformers. And I'm going to start by setting up a new project. I'm going to name this full damage. And now I'm going to add a cube to my scene and I'm going to name that player. And I'm going to remove the box collider and add a box collider 2D. And I'm also going to add a rigid body so we can get that moving later. I'm also going to add another cube and name that platform and do the same. Remove the box collider and add a, add a box collider 2D and feel free to use your sprites. I'm just using these because it's quick. I'm gonna scale it so it looks a little bit more like a platform and then I'm gonna duplicate it and set a quick scene. I'm gonna set one of the platforms really high so we have somewhere to fall from so we can test it. I'm also changing my camera background to something a little bit more pleasant to look at. And now I'm gonna add my player script and quickly set up a very basic movement we need some variables, a private rigid body 2D, I'll name that RB, a public float speed, so we can set how quick our player moves, a private flow, float move input, so we can keep track of the player's input, and my start function, I'm just going to set RB to the rigid body component that's attached to our player, and then in my update function, I'm going to set the move input to the player input by using input.getAccessHorizontal. And I'm going to change the velocity of the rigid body by setting it to a new vector 2. And for x, I'm going to use speed multiplied by move input multiplied by time dot delta time. And the y axis, I'll leave as it is. Now I go back to my script and I set the speed to 100. And I think later on I changed my mind and sent it to 150 because it felt a bit better. So now we can move left and right. And let's also let our little cube jump. We need a public float jump force and now we're going to check if the player is pressing the jump button by using input dot get button down and then jump and if that's the case we'll change the velocity again using rb dot velocity equals vector 2 dot up multiplied by the jump force so now if we go back to our scene and go to our player script we can set the jump force to let's say 10 see how that feels it's not amazing, but it will do for this project. So now I'm quickly going to add Cinemachine to this project so we're able to follow the player on the screen. So now that's done, we can go to Cinemachine, create 2D camera, and we're going to drag our player to the follow option. Now if we press play, camera follows around. Obviously there's a bunch of other options you can use, but just setting this up quickly so we can test our full damage. So now we're gonna add ground detection which is gonna help us with our jumps but it's also gonna help us with detecting if we're falling and you need a public transfer feet position you need a public float check radius and a private boolean is grounded and we also need a layer mask which i'm naming what is ground so now at the very top of our update function we want to check if the player is grounded and we can do that by using physics 2 dotoverlap circle and as variables we give it the feet position dot position and the check radius and also the layer mask. So now we can add that to our jump check so we ensure that the player can jump in air because currently we can basically fly. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and name it ground. And then I'm gonna set my platform prefab to this layer. And I'm gonna apply that. Now I'm going to go to my player script, set what is ground to the ground layer. And I'm also going to go ahead and create an empty object as a child of the player object. And I'm not going to name this feed position. Position that at the bottom of your cube or sprite. And now we can go ahead and set the rest of the variables for the player script. I'm going to set the check radius to 0.5 and now I'm going to drag the feed position object into the feed position field. So now we can jump around and we can double jump. And now it's actually time to add the full damage code. So we need two booleans, one called first time and one called is fallen. And I'm going to go ahead and set first time to true and it's fallen to false. We also need a vector three. I am naming this previous position. This is to keep the previous position of the player. And we also need a float named highest position to keep the highest position of the player when it starts falling. And I'm going to go ahead and initialize this in the start function and just set it to transfer.position. 
Now in our update function, we want to check if our player is not grounded. So there's a possibility that the player has fallen and we want to check if the player is going down. And we can check that by comparing the current transfer position and the previous position. So if the current transform position dot y is less than previous position dot y, then we are fallen. And we also only want to do this check once per fall. So that's what we use in this first time boolean for. So now first thing we're gonna do is set this variable first time to false. So we don't do this check again for the same fall. And we're gonna set our is fallen variable to true. So we know that the player is fallen. And we also gonna save the position in which the player is right now at the beginning of, of its fall in the highest position variable. And within the is grounded if statement, we also want to change previous position to the current transform position. So while the player is in the air, going up or going down, we're keeping track of the previous position. You can also go ahead and put this at the end of your update loop. So you keep track of your pr the previous position of the player throughout the entire game. Now we want to check if the player is on the ground, if it was fallen before they touched the ground. And if the player was falling, we want to check how far did they fall. So we take the highest position and we subtract the current position and we want to check if that's bigger than a number. And I'm using 10 here, but you can fine tune this for your own game, depending on when you want the player to take fall damage. And I'm also setting it's falling to false because we're not falling anymore and first time to true. So next time the player is falling, we go through the previous if statement and we check again if the player is falling. Right, so now we need a way to actually do damage to the player. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a private float health and set that equals to sex, which is just a totally random number. And I'm gonna create a function called take damage, which takes a float and subtracts that from the health variable. And so I don't bloat this tutorial, I'm just gonna debug.log the health in the console, but you should totally link that to your UI. And now let's test. So we fell, we took damage, and now we're just jumping around at a reasonable height and we're not taking damage. And that's about it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe so I get more treats.